Hello, and welcome to Out and Equals 2016 Virtual Summit Series, the very best from the 2015 Out and Equal Workplace Summit. My name is Daniel Lawrence Smith, Associate Director of Training here at Out and Equal. Today's topic will be the good, the bad, and the ugly, transitioning, and the critical importance of the ally. This is a broadcast audio call, and it will last for 75 minutes. Please use your speakers or headsets on your computer and make sure that you have that volume turned up. This is an interactive call, and we want your active participation. There will be polls and quizzes, and we want you to go ahead and chime in so that we have your input. Uh, with this call, we will be live tweeting, so feel free to tag us using hashtag virtual summit 16. A few announcements here at Out and Equal. We will continue our virtual summit series February 9th through March 17th, and our next one will be straight talks from teens about having not-so-straight parents. On February 16th, we will do Wells Fargo and Marriott, recent case studies on LGBT-inclusive marketing, and on March 17th, we will have a case study from our good friends at the Walt Disney Company. On February 24th, we're very excited to host a global webinar on China, which will be run by Ches Wallach, our Fulbright Scholar on Global Initiatives here at Out and Equal. Our next town call will be on February 25th. Please note that this will be at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We normally do it at noon Pacific. This will be at 10 a.m. Pacific, and we'll be talking about voluntary self-ID in a global workplace. March 3rd will be our Workplace Summit kickoff for the 2016 Out and Equal Workplace Summit. That is a new date, and we'll be doing it at 12 noon Pacific. March 1st, 8th, and 15th, we will present our three-part Building Bridges Towards LGBT Workplace Equality webinar series. That is our core cultural competency series covering key terms and concepts on gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, and assigned birth sex. That's what we do in session one, which is free to all of our constituent base. Session two and three is a fee for service at the bargain price of $69.95, and we go into the business case, why it makes good sense to be an LGBT inclusive environment. We talk about the landscape of LGBT rights and policies. We talk about the critical role of allies, and then we talk about strategic planning. March 22nd through 24th will be our executive forum held at the Palace Hotel right here in San Francisco. That then culminates on March 24th with Momentum Out and Equals Annual Leadership Celebration and Gala Dinner once again at the Palace Hotel. March 5th, 12th, and 19th will be our Train the Trainer certification course, and that is for anyone who is interested in becoming an Out and Equal certified trainer. It's a two-year certification providing resources and access to our trainers forum. A prerequisite of that is that you must attend the Building Bridges course as well. And then October 4th through October 7th will be the 2016 Out and Equal Workplace Summit at Swan and Dolphin at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. Important to note, Tuesday, October 4th will be our day-long leadership seminars. Uh, typically, those are held Monday through Thursday. So important to note, this year will be Tuesday through Friday for the Out and Equal Workplace Summit. We have a fantastic panel today on our topic, the good, the bad, and the ugly, transitioning and the critical importance of the ally. And I'd like to give them each a moment to introduce themselves. And we'll go ahead and begin with Angela. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time today to join. Uh, I'm Angela, Angela Orlando, um, specialist manager, slash, uh, manager uh, with Deloitte Consulting. Um, I've been uh, active in RBRG since I first came out about three, year, uh, three and a half years ago. Um, I'm a Naval Academy graduate, former Marine officer, uh, and I work in the um, IT consulting um, Oracle Arena. Um, and I'm glad to be here with a bunch of these with these folks that I know well and here to ask, answer any any of your questions. So we'll talk more shortly. Thank you so much, Angela and Billy Lynn. Hi, I'm Billy Lynn Ross. Um, I work with SAP Ariba Division. Um, I'm Production Operations Department. Um, keep the engineers from blowing things up um, and keeping your sites online. Um, 
I transitioned over three years ago. Um, I've been involved with my company ERG since about six months into my transition um, here at SAP. Um, I, and I got a bit background in electronics engineering. Um, I'm a parent of three, and welcome. Thank you so much. And Jennifer. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Jennifer Krizawa. I am from Orlando, Florida, and I have been working with Lockheed Martin for the last 14 years. I'm a project manager in our corporate information security department, um, which supports the entire corporation in keeping our data safe and secure. And for the last two years, I was the lead for our corporate uh, pride ERG. And um, just recently, as of this year, I took on the role as the chair for our corporate transgender council. Um, I'm also the founder of the T Network, which is a nonprofit transgender professional resource group here in Central Florida. And most importantly, I'm the mother of a nine year old who is the reason that I do everything I do. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jennifer. And last but not least, Tina. Yeah, Tina White. Uh, I was at Pfizer for 14 years and decided to transition or transitioned in 2013. Uh, I have five children and five grandchildren and still married. And the, the transition was terrifying but successful by most standards. And, and my company really played a, and allies played a big role in that. Great. Thank you all so much for sharing and for being on the panel today. We're looking forward to kicking things off. And that's who we are, but we want to find a little bit more about who's on the call with us. So we're going to go to our first poll. And we're asking, what is your role within your company? And feel free to check any and all that apply for yourself. So training and professional development, human resources, if you're an employee resource group member or business resource group member, executive, if you work in diversity and inclusion, you're an LGBTQA employee. If it's something else, please feel free to chat that in or not applicable. Once you've hit all of your answers, go ahead and hit submit, and we'll take a look at who's on the call. So we're seeing about 57% LGBTQA employees. We're also seeing uh, over 50% of employee resource or business resource group members, about 12% from human resources, 10 from training and professional development, um, a few others, case manager, uh, expert in uh, transgender insurance, retired military, uh, project manager in technology and LGBT ally for 25 plus years, fantastic. Nurse, safety, wonderful. Thank you all for your participation with that. Looking at our next poll here, we're asking what is your gender identity? Uh, defining that as your innate, deeply felt psychological identification of gender, which may or may not correspond to your designated sex at birth. So if you feel comfortable answering this question, Go ahead and put in your answer. And if you don't see yourself represented, feel free to chat that in as well. Okay, fair amount of cis male and female, uh, as well as um, a good portion of uh, transgender female, transgender male, identifying as gender diverse or gender fluid. Fantastic, thank you. And our next question is, do you know someone in your workplace who identifies as transgender? Yes, no, perhaps you're not sure, or you prefer not to answer. Okay, and we're seeing a very, very fair portion of you saying that you do have somebody in your workplace who identifies as transgender. Over 50, almost 60% with that, 30% saying no, and a fair portion too, about 13% saying that you're not sure. Thank you. Oops. Our next question here is open-ended, and we want you to use your chat box. So what do you hope to gain from today's session? So there will be a chat box in your lower left-hand corner, and go ahead and chat in your answer to that. Great. Perspectives from other trans people. Uh, tips to support a transgender person in the office, great. Education, how to be a better ally, better understanding, 
education, fantastic. More exposure to the transgender movement, great to hear. Community outreach, the roles of allies, wonderful. Keep those coming in. This is great and will help for our conversation later on. Thank you. Again, the role of the ally, knowledge and education, fantastic. And keep those coming in, and we strongly encourage you, if you have questions throughout the call, go ahead and put those in the chat box. We will flag them for our Q&A, or if we can, we'll try to deal with it as we're going through the call. Thank you. How to be a better ally? Great. A lot of ally development, so that's wonderful to see. And thank you all for your participation. With that, I would now like to turn it over to our very wonderful panel. Okay, thank you very much, um, Daniel. Um, so, you know, I'm taking a look at all the questions. I think they're they're fantastic, and you know, we really want to make it interactive. Now, and, and part of it too, you know, with a lot of the focus, is, and it's allies across the board. Um, but you know, coming out is a bit uh, a, a challenge for you know, wherever you are. So, you know, talking is better, you know, among people, real life stories, um, and going back and forth, it's really much better than us going ahead and just giving you a lecture. So that's what we're here for, and that's why I've got this great crew with me. All right, I actually got, got the webinar to work stuff. Okay, so really quick, we're going to be just going a little bit of background. Quick objective, um, I want the majority of this to be interactive. I've got some canned questions for everybody. Um, you don't have to go with follow my script. It's really more, it's more for your info. Uh, we do some conclusion, we've got some resources, and we just want to try and get as many questions as possible. For many of you guys who know me, I'm moderating because you don't want to hear me talk all the time. I want you to, I want these guys to talk, and then you all to answer the questions. So keep the questions coming in, and we really appreciate um, the conversation. All right. Okay. Whoa, ugh, a little fast on that on a quick, quick board. Okay. You know, just taking a step back. I mean, coming out, you know, for for the, the gay and lesbian, I mean, that's a challenge in itself. But you add that into, you know, we're, you know, dealing with internal feelings, and uh, you're not in the right body. And, you know, trying to deal with yourself, your everyday, your social, your family, your um, your workplace, and trying to manage it and keep everything ahead, it, it drives you crazy. We're, we're pretty much, um, we may look, we'll look good on the outside, you know, nice happy face, but inside we are a total mess, you know, pulling hair out, you know, don't know what to do, who to talk to. And really what, what's helped myself and the others, um, you know, plus from the ally aspect, it's really it's really the ally. An ally is anybody for support. You know, anybody can be an ally for anyone. You know? So take all this information as well, and it can be applied for you know other other um, other LGBTQA people in the office. I mean, it's more and more important that we're there together as a community. So you guys all make an impact through your support and camaraderie. Myself, I cannot have made it through without without allies. Okay, so what's our objective for today? Okay, we want to try and share what have been good experience and the not so good experience, both from the transgender side as well as the ally side, you know, and and what what contributed to um, the results, right? You, know, you hear all the good stories, but you know you need to have the bad stories too because you can learn from your failure of you know how to handle different situations because each each one everybody is different. So we want to understand how why the ally is so important and there are different ways that the ally can provide that support, whether it's just listening or providing information or running interference. And it's not just for yourself, it's also for the family. So we also want to take this, you know, expand this out a little bit too for, you know, this is also then to be applied to parents of transgender kids as well, especially you don't know how many of them might be in the workplace. So we really want you to apply it from uh, an overall aspect, okay? 
So for for our ask, for your takeaway, and this is just you know one of the many things. It just uses as a conversation point, right? Or talking with with one another, with your organization to build out and, and you know bring in more allies, or you know tap into other resources within you know other companies, BRGs, and share information. How do you build just a, a supportive, authentic environment? So. It's not just it's not just transitioning employees. It's ev- it's everybody to feel comfortable with who they are, and you know what we want to consider what would be a good versus a not good so good ally, right? It's understanding you know what questions to ask or you know trying to feel out the other person. Okay, um, so right now we're going to go ahead and jump in um, to the discussion. Um, what we'll do is, you know, we'll go ahead and we have brief discussions of, of uh, each of ourselves. Um, so we'll do that shortly, again, before we start going right into the questions. Um, so really, uh, myself as a moderator, I'm going to ask. I will try not to um, to talk too much. Um, you know, I, I would like to, to do an acknowledgement to our fourth panelist, uh, Bryn Tannehill, uh, who is not being able to be uh, attend today due to a client engagement. Um, Bryn uh, was an uh, awesome member uh, back in October. Um, she represents Sparta, which is our military orga- military organization. Um, so please feel free to ask any military-related questions as well. Uh, I'm also a former military. Bryn is another Naval Academy graduate um, and a friend. And you know, I'm also um, available to reach out into that network. All right, so here's what here's here's the discussion guidelines or our asks, right? Remember, remember that these are individual experiences, right? It's it's not the experience of every single transgender person, right? So please keep that in mind. What we want of you, we want you to ask tough questions, right? Ask any questions, right? What you may be thinking. You know, someone else may be thinking as well. So please go ahead and ask. If you may think it's simple, somebody else may think it's very, very important, right? And if you don't, um, I don't know if there's a way to do this anonymously, uh, but please go ahead and, and chat in. If you chat directly to uh, to Pat, um, she'll be able to uh, make sure it, it, it's, you know, it's just yourself then, okay? Uh, and again, any, any question, there's no such thing as, as a dumb question. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go right on, on into it. Uh, so we'll go through, we'll do a, a brief intro, uh, a little bit more, and then we'll go ahead into the question. So uh, let's go ahead, Billy. Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, just. Oh, sorry. So I'm Billy Lynn Ross. I work for SAP. I'm, as I said earlier, I've been. I transitioned over three years ago. I'm a single parent. Well, I'm a parent of three children, uh, ages from 7 to 21. Um, my oldest will be 21 in next month. Um, <clears throat> I have a background in engineering. I've got to um, – of electronics engineering. I'm also a professional photographer as a hobby, and – Transitioning has been really helpful in ensure, in helping me become the person I always wanted to be. And uh, and help me live the more authentic life and be a better person overall for my family, my workplace, my children, and everything. Okay, thanks, Billy Jen. And if there's if there's again, if there's anything else you need to add. Because we kind of we kind of did say a lot in the beginning. Yeah. Um, hmm. I think as being the kind of the ally on the call, you know, just just. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So. Okay, that, that, that's that's fine. Think, yeah. Tina, you want to add anything else? I I would just say that when I came out uh, at work, I did so many things wrong, and and the reason was. This was finally my chance to tell the world who I was, and I didn't want anyone to steal that story. And all of my trans friends told me, I see Lori Fox is on the call. She was one of them, said, don't do this yourself. 
you need allies. And what I learned very quickly, fortunately, was how absolutely critical allies are. And we tend, because this is our moment of freedom, we, we sometimes forget that. And so uh, we really rely on you to, or others who are a few years behind us, really rely on you to step forward and, and volunteer and help us navigate it. We don't always ask when we should. Okay, Ken, thank, thank you very much. And um, I, I just I saw one, and thank you very much for all the questions. It, it, it's great. Um, you know, I, I saw one question that I do want to ask right now, and it was uh, this is from the, um, the competition, the panel. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, so we are, you know, FTMs. I mean, uh, MTX, uh, sorry. Um, I did want to ask you, uh, I did want to ask you uh, FTMs as well. Um, you know, part of it, too, is, you know, I'm going, we're going with, against the folks I know, and I did know some. Uh, but, again, that's one of the things you'll find, that um, our population of MTS versus uh, is much higher than uh, MTF. So if it is the case, if it is the case, I will be glad to have a trans guy. Uh, I love the trans guys. Diego Sanchez from PFLAG is is awesome, as well as Jameson. So, you know, so please just reach out to me separately, and we can talk about it for uh, next year. Okay. So uh, again, keep the comment, and, and I apologize in advance if we are not able to get to all of your questions. They're fantastic. Uh, what we'll try and do maybe is you know get get them and maybe you know, try and answer them separately and get them posted. Okay. So I'm going to go through all um, right now, and as they answer, I will also go ahead and go through some of the questions too. So the first question is going to be, what's your definition of an ally? Right? And I, I'd like uh, all the panelists to, to answer this. And first we'll start off with, um, with Tina and Billy and then Jen. So sure. Tina. Uh, um, okay. For me, an ally... Uh, is someone who basically is just wealthy, welcoming me into the world. And they do three things, and they don't have to do all of them. But one is they defend me, and they do that because they're aware of my label and the stigma it may carry. That gets the most attention. The two that probably um, I value the most when I'm not under attack is they make me feel welcome and valued. And they do that because they choose to ignore my label. And that, that's a hard line to cross. When do, you, when do you show awareness of my label? And when do you try to help me forget it and just value me as a colleague, as a person, irrespective of my gender? And, and then my closest allies are the people who decide to connect to the person inside me by placing their own vulnerability alongside mine. Uh, where we we really just connect and get to know each other as humans uh, and, and just getting over labels on both sides. And, and, and all of those are, are important because we tend to feel whether or not anyone else intends it very isolated from everyone around us. Great. Thanks, Tina. Billy. Yes. Allies in my, in my experience, the best people that are allies are, like Tina said, first off, the ones that defend us. Um, there are ones that defend us because of our labels, and then there's ones that defend us who are unaware of our labels. Um, to both sets of people, it's a thank you. It's just reaffirming. It makes me feel safe. Makes makes me feel like I'm in a place that's worth my time and energy. Um, that is probably one of the biggest things, though, is just the people who are do stand up for you. Um, another thing is communications with team members uh, in the workplace and friends. Uh, as long as everybody, you know, using the right pronouns or they're trying to use the right pronouns. Some of us have higher or lower voice. Some of us have lower voices and have a harder time passing, and that subconscious effort to make that switch is really hard for a lot of people um, until some of us get voice surgery or not, because um, sometimes voice training isn't enough um, for us to pass. Uh, so those people are are 
also great allies. The ones that are actively trying, they're, you know, even when they mess up, they catch themselves. That makes it makes you feel wonderful. Um, and then there's, like Tina said, there's there there are the friends and family, the ones that are close to us, the ones we bond with. Um, I've got several people here at work who I've bonded with that um, prior to my transitioning and even post-transitioning, it, they've been my friends. They see me for me, and they've seen what I've become and blossomed into uh, in the workplace and recognize the potentials that I still have um, and hey, what uh, more I can bring. Sorry, things are popping up on my phone. Um, so those people, all those people that are you know, respectful and support us and defend us are all allies in my book. Okay, Billy, thank you. Um, now let, let's hear for, uh, from Jen. And Jen, you know, Jen's great to have on this panel because um, she's our she's our ally. So well, let's hear let's hear from her. And then what we're going to do then is try and address all the questions that you're all asking. Okay, all right, Jen, thanks. Yeah, your turn. Yeah, thank you. So it's interesting. In fact, you mentioned the questions. I saw just one pop up that I think <coughs> I'm hoping what I'm going to say may answer it a little bit. I think somebody mentioned, you know, can you be an ally without defending or protecting and um, speaking up necessarily? And and being somebody who is as active an ally as I am, I, I do get questions a lot about what it means to be an ally. And um, and so I feel like I'm always revisiting and kind of, you know, peeling the onion back on this ally discussion. And um, and I don't think there's any really necessarily wrong answers around being an ally, but I will say this. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of great panels on, you know, the evolution of an ally and how it starts and how, you know, where you can go with it. But to me, being an ally is different from being someone who just isn't opposed to or someone who's just in agreement with, you know, equal treatment. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not that kind of, in my view, it's not just that kind of a casual uh, opinion. Um, to me, an ally is visibly in alignment with and a stand for the equal treatment of a person or a group. And, and I think that does in, in, in ways mean uh, listening and speaking up. Um, you know, however, there is a difference between being an ally and an activist. I know I'm, well, I'm both. Um, but I think, you know, with an ally, for instance, the listening, if you don't listen, you know, how can you then know what needs to be said or what isn't being heard, right? Um, and, and part of being an ally, you have, you have to know what, what, you're, what you're being an ally for, right? What, what's happening what's what the, that group is dealing with um and much as we may not want to, to know this or, or deal with this there are all the voices of the repressed or discriminated groups out there whether we want to be or not um and and i say that because silence sends <coughs> just as strong a message as and as loudly of a message as your voice does um, and so this is, and that's one of the reasons I think allies are so critical. And then, and you know, for me, you know, part of the passion around this this particular group is that the more up underrepresented or unequally treated a group is, the more critical the role of the ally is. Does that necessarily equate to, you know, getting out there with a big sign or, or you know, when we say defending, um, there's a lot of definitions around that. But I really do think that there is a um, a role there that has to be. There's a responsibility that I think needs to be understood when you're in a position of not being the discriminated against or the or the the repressed group. Um, and so, so for me, that's and that's just that you know I could probably talk all day about ally, but um, but I think that that to me kind of encompasses a, a you know a lot of a lot of what I think an ally is. It's more than a friend. It encompasses friend, um, but it, it is more than that. Hey, Jen, uh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that question as well. I mean, you can also go for P Flag has part of their um, one of their courses about um, being a trans ally, and it talks about the evolution of the ally to being the the super the super ally like Jen, and going through some of the phases. Uh, I want to go ahead and address some of the questions that are coming up. I know a lot of them are common, 
Um, and, and I do want to address the, the ones that's related to uh, more with with how do you, you know? And I'll, I'll just with this for for Billy and Tina, um, and hopefully it can apply to um, you know whether it's a trans you know teen first. So first off, you know there's a, you know, a question related to someone um, who has trans uh, trans trans kid or is in a class with a trans kid. Um, what you can do. And I'll answer real quickly. My son is a sophomore in high school in the marching band. Um, there is a trans guy uh, who's a junior that's also in the marching band. Um, he ended up being actually just a cool supporter saying, I get you, right, because that's my son knows me. So uh, it's, it's support and stuff like that. I don't know if any of you all have had similar experiences that you can chime in. Um, otherwise, I'd like to go, you know, in search of yeah, going I've, to something I've, similar. Yes, dealing with transgender children is interesting. Um, my own children befriended a trans, uh, a transgender child um, when we were at the Trans March in San Francisco last year. Um, the parents of the tra uh, transgender child, who was a trans woman or trans girl, um, were ecstatic to have have the see their child interacting with other kids like a normal child. Um, that's all they're mostly looking for, is they just want to see their kid grow up, be happy, and live life. Um, my daughters had no idea that their friend was transgender. Um, they treated her just like a normal friend. They meet at the park. And... And she was only, let me see, she was seven years old at the time. So the relief and the happiness that just their normal interaction with, uh, with her uh, made both of her parents the happiest they'd been in months. Made them, oh, give, it man. gave them hope. Right, you know, and, and that's part of it too. I mean, that's support as well. So, so one of the things too, I was really wanted to talk about. It, it it was brought up as like, how do you handle it with depression and all of dysphoria, and trying to work as well, um, whether it's school or or the job. <laughs> and you know, what I'd like you know, you maybe go through with you know, quickly with Tina and Billy, and then um, you know, for somebody from the flip side with Jen, is is how how did you know, how did how did you manage it, and how did you know what was the biggest impact for the allies to help get you through that? Sure. Um, yeah, I think we are such a diverse community. I loved working with transgender youth because I realized how I'm, I'm a dinosaur to a lot of them, uh, and, I, and I realized that, that generation gaps. Uh, exist even within our own community. And I, I just point that out to say that there are many different identities that we, we put under the umbrella of transgender, but what we all share is that gender dysphoria is just an unimaginably painful, painful experience. And we may find different solutions or define our identity as the rest of the world does a little differently but what we're trying to escape from is this horrible thing where no one in the world knows who we are. And it's like living behind a wall of plexiglass where you, you can never touch other people because you're not being authentic. Um, and what the real role that allies played for me beyond defending me uh, and advocating for me, the much more important one was I had lived a life, even if I was unhappy, with white male privilege. And it didn't even occur to me to check myself. I would just express my opinion. All of a sudden, I was this a minority of one in a room, and even if everyone else was thinking kind thoughts, my head was just swimming with, oh, my God, they must not think I'm, I'm smart. They must think this. It was all in my head, and what an ally did that helped me was just walking into a meeting and then just coming up and shaking my hand. Tina, it's great to have you here. 
sitting next to me in the meeting. It's those little gestures that uh, with time freed me to really return to bringing my full self into work. And it's something that we have necessarily to hide, but it's, it's there constantly. And, and the most wonderful gift allies have given me is, is just reminding me that I was still smart, still valued, uh, and just welcoming, welcoming me into that group. And that is the most important thing that you should do that for anyone at work, but, but it's, it's something that we're definitely thinking about all day long, uh, at least for a few years. Um, you know, we'll just flip over Jen, um, as an ally, you know, what have you have you seen and what have, what has worked for you from that aspect, you know, considering, you know, you know, we're dealing with all this mess on the inside. So when you say what have I seen, like in terms of how I dealt with it, and you mean in terms of how do I show my my support? Right, right. So or... for instance, you know, you know, like yeah, like for for instance, you know, you know, a lot of times too, we're not necessarily working to our best and maybe not focused. So you know, for the flip side of it, how do you how do you provide the support to give us the 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 oomph to get back onto our our normal normal role? Right. Like, well, so especially in the workplace, I think um, as soon as you know somebody, and I and I and I would speak to it even a little more broadly. Not that there's not some very specific challenges here, and tell me if this is off base of what you're talking about. But I think working in a team environment um, uh, that we a lot of us work in or even a, you know, a manager to employee or program manager to, to you know, program team, you know, un, that, that listening component that I talked about. And, you know, if you're listening, if you, as I say, putting the person first, and that's very difficult for some of us to do, or very, uh, can be very results-driven, results-minded people. I, I'm one of those people. Um, making a concerted effort to really get in the world of as much as you're able to. And a lot of times it's, you may not get to know all of the details. You just know there's stuff going on in that person's world, in that person's life. I think the way I approach it is there's two things that I do. Um, number one I do is, is if, if, it's, if there's an opportunity, um, aside from you know, not in a group setting, of ensuring that person that, that I'm a safe space and that I'm somebody that if they need to talk, or if they need um, whatever it is that they need, right, that, that you can basically say, like, that you understand that they're a person and they're not just somebody that over there turning out deliverables. And, and that goes such a long way um, in, in kind of even helping that person kind of reengage and get out of whatever they're, they're, they're stuck in while they're at work is really just reminding them that, you, that you're not just looking at them and saying, we don't care what's going on with you. Um, so doing that, especially in a one-on-one, -on -one, and, and it could be very subtle. It could be a, uh, you know, if you maybe don't know the details of the situation, there, there's always a way to, con to me, there's always a way to convey that kind of a, of a humanity, right, uh, to, to, the, to the workplace. And then on the other side of it, I think it's not making our differences an issue and making it something that we embrace on, you know, when we're on those team calls, when we're working together, and really helping to focus on the things that, that do empower that person, that do enable them to bring whatever they've got they're bringing, you know what I mean, to the, to the table. And so, so you have that private focus on what's going on, and then you have a more public focus on not what's going on. And um, I just find that the two tend to kind of work really well together. And there are times where it doesn't matter what, you know, somebody's going to need whatever they need. They might need time away. They might need help or, or support or, you know, whatever. But, um, but that, does, that, does that kind of make sense in, in terms of the question that you asked? Um, yeah, it does. And, okay. and, you know, and, and kind of, too, you know, one of the things that's related that, you know, I want to throw out there, too, which is common, it's, you know, you know how did the allies or your ERG or whatever – help you to come through with, you know, educating the team or how, how, you know, how did you bring about that and pronouns within the team in the workplace, right? It's, you know, or it was a question about always about asking and announce, right? It's not something, you know, you know, we don't have big T on our head and stuff. So, you know, what, what worked well from you from, a, you know, for others helping you at, in an ally standpoint, Tina? Yeah, um, our company um, held some 
seminars for people who are interested. I think what was more important than the details of what they said was if, if I speak up for myself, it sounds a little, there's an air of desperation, and I'm asking you to take consideration of me. But when an ally or when the company speaks up, they have a, a special position. They, they're not just talking about Tina and let's be nice to Tina and let's be considerate. What, what they have an opportunity to say is, let me tell you what this company stands for. Let me tell you what I stand for. And that is a win-win. What I win from that, but then everyone else in the room feels larger just from that statement. Uh, and when I came out, my company was very vocal about what Pfizer stands for, uh, which is diversity. They made it much larger than me. And there was a love fest. Everyone in the company, everyone, a lot of people wrote the company saying that they were so excited to be working for a company that stood up for people that needed that kind of support. And, and so it's those types of communications where you're really just making very clear what the company's position is and what it values. That gets remembered long after people forget about pronoun rules and things like that. I, I think that's the most important thing is to, is to really – speak to people's sense of value. Uh, and a corollary statement that we could add is, did you have any challenges with um, names or pronouns uh, with anyone? And then, then how did you handle it, and did you need to get an ally involved to, to help out with it? it? It It happens all the time. I think one burden for... For us, this is, again, where I'm speaking personally. Um, I don't think every time someone gets a pronoun wrong, they're being discriminatory or inconsiderate. Um, we're all creatures of habit. We're all pattern seekers. And, and I send out a confusing set of patterns. So people are going to get that wrong. And I have to own not taking that personally unless I really feel it is. And so what I found invaluable was having a sense of humor. It did help when allies spoke up. It was more the, the, the difficult situations were more in big meetings when someone would use the wrong pronoun. Everyone felt they'd look over at me. No one would say anything because they didn't want to interrupt the meeting. And yet that put a big burden on me because I'm so not going to interrupt the meeting and insist on the right pronouning. And, and there's, there's just a matter of judgment. Bringing it up once in a while just to remind people I think is useful. I, I don't think you need to um, do it all the time. Um, but, but don't leave that. Leaving that on the, on the transgender person is, is a, is, it's, it's a very difficult burden for them to bear to correct people. Okay, uh, Billy, can you add something, uh, you know, on, uh, the, yes, uh, that, on the trans side? Yes, we, and we've got a very yes, good, so Jen's got a very good uh, point. Yes, what Tina said is pretty much accurate for me, too. Um, still dealing with, you know, people do get the pronouns right. We are actually hardwired as human beings to recognize the higher and lower re registers for male, female, and most people are in automatic mode. It's never been a conscious decision to register a person's voice who sounded male as a female and use the female uh, pronouns with them. Um, so that's an actual external conscious switch, uh, which is really against a lot of um, Mother Nature's programming by default that we're raised with um, since being young. Uh, <clears throat> No, I deal with it all the time. I've not had any real issues. All my managers have been excellent about it. Um, the people I find that have more issues are super close friends who have known me since 10 years before I transitioned. They're the ones that make the mistake constantly. Um, they acknowledge it, which is good. And uh, if I do get somebody who does make a mistake in the workplace, normally because I've only talked to them over the phone, and it's normally an email, 
uh, well, they'll use the wrong pronouns. I just send them a private email and let them know, please. I go by she, her, and they normally, oh, they are normally, oh, I wasn't sure. Um, and they apologize, and everything's good. All right, thanks, Billy. Uh, Jen, I know that you wanted to add one part, so if you can also uh, discuss that piece when uh, we're going to address the, um, you know, there was a question about, you know, going to HR for this, you know, possible discrimination and uh, speaking up versus speaking for. I think uh, Jen can uh, talk really well to that. Yeah, so so thank you. A couple things there, I think, and, and one of these is from the side of it, but really from the side of the ally. You know, a lot of what we're looking for, and, and, and rightly so, is, you know, allies asking, how do we, how can we be better allies? How can we support you? You know, you see all the questions here. People really wanting to understand what to do in the workplace, how to approach things, you know, how to how to know what to say. But on the flip side, from from an ally's perspective, one of the things that I think a lot of allies deal with, or potential allies, or or people that want to understand, is this this really really um, intense fear of offending or making a mistake. And I even still deal with that as. as Many years as I have been in this role, you know, I still have times where I'm afraid that I might that I might inadvertently make a mistake. And I think somebody mentioned, you know, you know, making a mistake versus malice. Um, but the, you know, th there are many times where it's great, but I think most of the time, you know, if it's malicious or not. And I think just on the flip side, if I had a, you know, if I could make one request from the ally side of the table, it would be making sure that the message is to, given to the allies that it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to ask a question. It's okay to be, to, to ask to be educated because I think what we're creating is a, you know, we're furthering the ignorance and, and, and I have found at least in my experience so far that while you'll always have the extreme, you know, I, I have found that the majority of the issues that we deal with right now really stem from ignorance. And and so that that's the main the number one piece for me. And I think you know somebody did bring up, you know I think I'm seeing the question here. The HR prefer they contact them, and 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 that's and I guess that's where it gets a, that does get a little bit trickier gray area in the sense that you know if you have a person transitioning in the workplace and they're not comfortable being asked questions, you know somehow making that making people aware. But I I would shy away from kind of a generic rule called if you're have a question, you have to contact HR and you have to go through them because, you know, God forbid you ask the person. Um, I think that pull, that creates a divide. I think that further segregates us and further creates separation um, versus bringing us together. And um, and so to me, I think that 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 piece of it I really wanted to to bring forward. And then on the um, speaking up for or, or you know or speaking in the place of. I've heard a couple of different stories where on the positive side, you know, an ally being on a call and continually kind of reinforcing or promoting the use of the right pronouns or the right name with somebody in order to kind of to, to bring in everybody into the fold in order to help everybody understand. Because I think somebody mentioned voice, you know, in a virtual work environment and in a telecon and telecommuting work environment, you know, you have the added challenge of somebody on the call, you know, missing gendering by voice. And so having somebody else there so that, you know, you're not the one constantly saying, um, actually, could you say she or actually, could you say he? I think that goes a long way, and I think that is one of the things that allies can do um, as a way of using your voice, as a way of defending or speaking up for it. It doesn't have to be a confrontational defense. It can be an educational. It can be a inclusive. It can be a, a culture-changing attitude or behavior that you bring to those, those situations. Um, and I think there's going to be times where you're where you're going to you know you may have to actually depending on your role interject, and in a way that says this is not acceptable. Um, I had a friend recently that has the unfortunate situation of having a manager that is not um, being as cooperative around their transition as they really should be, and um, and had the fortune I guess of having an HR participant on their call one time, and and after about the fifth or sixth time of being misgendered and mispronounced. And it was clearly intentional. 
that HR person actually spoke up on that, that person's behalf, which I think is important. And and then and there's a difference there, right? There is the speaking for versus the just being the being the ally and being the the the, the voice of, um, if that makes sense. Again, you have to go case by case. If someone is uncomfortable, again, you you know knowing that you don't want to intentionally go go do do something that would not be be right. But I think the more the more the transgender communities can be embracing the ignorant ally and bringing them in. You know, changing minds comes from changing hearts, and, and you can't do that without giving somebody the ability to, to get you. Great. Thanks, Jen. And I just want to interject um, as well with it, and it also addresses, too, about um, really there's a question there about, you know, what if you don't know if there's any trans individuals at work? How do you advertise that you're an ally? Um, and really, it's it's within your BRG or, or within your communication. It, it's it's your support for everybody, no matter what, of them being their authentic self. At least that's it's a starting point. Is is how you know somebody would feel comfortable going to you. I know for myself. I mean, we've got a great group group at Deloitte. But it's really because of one of our leaders uh, that I actually came out to her first. Um, so, and that's it. it, it, it again, it's education. Um, I think that uh, everyone in the you know the total community, you know, including allies, you know, want to know more. I mean, every you know, the biggest thing is getting to know the person. Um, so it, that's the most most important thing. Don't be shy. Get to know them. For instance, I I'm an open book. Ask any question. Right. However, you know, Tina or Billy means, you know, maybe really tight on, you know, they don't want the, some of those questions. So it's just like anything else, get to know the person. Uh, hey, um, so let me just go back to one of the, one of the other questions that I have that, um, that that's, I think might be important. Um, so Tina and Billy, you know, Bill or go Billy. What what is one situation where you thought somebody was a strong ally and or thought wasn't a strong ally, ally but they really went to bat for you? That would have to be the time. Um, uh, let me see. It's mostly dealing with different family um i've got um a cousin who's in he's in the police force um i was really worried about coming out to him because he's a sergeant in alabama um and you know um when i came out to him he was more worried about my safety than anything um, and his wife and his family um, have turned into some of my biggest supporters. And I was initially unsure how any of them were going to take it. Um, once again, it was a matter of they were being in Alabama, and that was being judgmental on my part and um, going by statistics as well. Um, so I was not sure. But it turns out they've been really good members of supporting me. Um, my cousin-in-law, shall I say, call her, um, she's asked me lots of questions on what she can do um, to promote more things out there to be, you know, equal, um, uh, and how that they can, you know, you know, just to find out more about transgenders and how they should react or whatnot, um, they are personally looking very forward to me visiting. Um, uh, they want to see, A, my kids and me, um, but it was really just heartwarming to have the fact that she has taken so much time and asked me so many questions and taken the time to get to know me. Oh. Right, right. So that shows you, but you know, between the, the outside affects, you know, the personal life affects the work. Oh yeah, that, that wasn't well. in work. That wasn't in workplace. In the that's workplace. That's okay, but but, yeah. but the part of the point is here is an ally can come from very unexpected places. So, um, Tina, 
I don't know if, if you you know got this story, but or or then you know Jen maybe have have, have you had someone who was you thought was a very strong ally um, really kind of didn't do the support or basically screwed stuff up for you? Yeah, could, I, I'd love to speak to that. Um, and that's the coolest thing about all this. I have learned so much about life and my own labeling of people. On, on the one hand, I've assumed that I had to worry about conservative questions. I assumed when I went to a conference, uh, a management conference down in North Carolina with a bunch of truckers and building services people that I had to be worried. I was completely wrong. Uh, on the other hand, in in uh, in our neighborhood, I had a a very good friend, a gay friend, who I thought was going to be my strongest ally, uh, and he did everything. We're still dear friends, but he did everything I would counsel you not to do as an ally. He announced to me that he was my most important advocate, and that therefore I should listen to him because he was more experienced than me. Uh, that was offensive because he doesn't know my experience. Um, and it's for me to decide who my most important advocate is. He then proceeded to tell me everything I was doing wrong. He then proceeded to speak to uh, my neighbors on my behalf without consulting me and said things that I would never say so that I value an ally that is out there for me. But I, but, but here was someone who, with the best of intentions, was pushing their own agenda, their own coming out experience, and and completely invalidated my own coming out, which is my own first statement, and and that was just miserable. Uh, great, great. So I mean, again, um, it's understanding, and don't you know? Don't assume it's you. Know, yeah, everybody's everybody's an individual. Uh, so you know, you know, I've saw a couple mentions about Caitlyn Jenner, and um, you know, really, for from that aspect, I mean, that could be another whole discussion on it. Um, but we really don't want to talk about that um, about her at the, with this panel. But I just I just saw another a good question come up, and um, it's as an ally, what's the best way for me to validate your struggles and your decision without making it a fo focal point of our friendship? Um, and, and basically, too, you know, you know it, it's also the, um, the the work relationship. I think that's a really good good question. Um, um, so, uh, Tina, Billy, if you can briefly comment on that, that would be great. The, the, the most valuable advice I got from another trans woman uh, when I was planning to transition was she, she said, Tina, when I transitioned, it was to finally put my gender behind me. Uh, and, and that's, uh, I'm willing to talk about my gender to anyone like Angela, but the reality is I spent all of my life thinking about gender constantly. And now finally, I just feel like a person going to work, getting up, getting dressed, talking to people. Um, and, and so the most valuable thing, I, I would want people to feel they can ask me any question they want. But the nicest part is I just feel it's, it's Tina, welcome to the human race. And just talking to me about football, about, Anything but trans once in a while is just very nice um, as, as a person. And just, it, I mean, it really isn't any more complicated than getting to know someone from any other minority group. Okay, I agree with Tina. I agree with Tina completely. It's, you know, taking the time to get to know me. It's not all about, I'm not about being trans. I'm just about being me. Um, like Tina said, there's when you're before you transition, you're always thinking about it. Um, you're thinking of how to fit in. You're thinking of this. You're thinking of that. Um, and I started attending groups, and one of the best things I ever heard from anybody at any of the groups I ever attended throughout my life was to just own it if you're going to do it. Just own it. Be yourself. And 
if you're and if you be yourself, people will support you. That's all there is to it. Um, there's always going to be people who are not going to support you, but there will be people who will support you, and there will be those people who don't know you who will support you because you will be yourself. Uh, Jen, do you have yeah. anything from, from the allies aspect to add on this one? Yeah, and it's funny, this just this came up recently. So I mentioned really briefly that I started a, a transgender professionals resource group here in Orlando about a year and a half ago. And one of the most interesting things, and it, I see it more and more, is, and it isn't to knock or say that there shouldn't be support groups out there, but I want to be clear that what we've created was something that was not meant to be a support group. It was meant to be a resource, professional resource and networking group. And that doesn't mean that, that we don't provide support. But one of the things that I've loved the most about this group is watching people come and and seeing and letting other people see. Because we have a, a mix of people there that are allies, that are you know haven't transitioned yet, people that are fully transitioned. I mean, it's, it's we run the gamut in, this, in the room uh, when there's the 40, 50 of us that we've grown to now. And... The greatest thing is it isn't they're not when they're there it isn't about their transition. It isn't about the fact that they're that they are or they aren't transgender. Sure, we cover topics that are relevant to them, right? And we and we want to make sure that that resource component is there. But when it comes down to it, that's not what everybody's day to day life is about. So if you were to come to one of our meetings or our gatherings and walk around and talk to people, you're going to talk to people about their lives. Um, and, you know, and we all just get together as, as people and talk to each other as people and to the point that, um, and it's so comfortable and it's so non-judging, non-judgmental, um, that, you know, there are people that are in that room that you wouldn't know it was their very first time because they're so welcomed and they're so comfortable. Um, but also the last meeting we had, I had somebody walk up to me from the group and, and ask me, about someone else in the room that I think it might have been their first visit, I don't remember. And they said to me, you know, do you know if that person transitioned or this person is transgender? And, and I looked at them and I honestly was like, I don't actually. I have no idea. And they were like, okay. You know, and I mean, it was just like that. It just, it, it matters in the sense that we're creating this space where everybody can come and, and have the things they need and, and be in the, you know, the company of people who understand for whatever, in whatever way they need them to understand. But it also isn't about that. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things I've seen, and it's really breaking through some of the issues that we've seen here, and I'm sure happen everywhere. And, and I know we won't get into some of the, the discussions around, you know, uh, people in the media and stuff. But uh, you know, one of the things that I think we all, we've all found is, you know, internal struggles. You know, people judging other people within the community for how they transition or how they choose to be or how they, anything and. And having that not exist and having people just be with each other and yet, like you're saying, at the same time are clearly there as, you know, for the same reason has just been, I think it's actually one of the biggest reasons that our group is growing and is, and is the kind of group that it is now. Hey, Jen, thank you. We, we actually had a, a really good question come up, too, about um, if you feel that, you know, the trans, uh, trans colleagues distance themselves from, from you all, what can you do? Um, you know, that's a good point. Um, so, Billy, can you uh, give a quick response to that? I know what I would have, but I would probably be talking for a long time. Billy, checking you. Thank you, Angela. Um, yes, uh, if we are transitioning and we start distancing ourselves from people, um, the most likely reason for that is we don't know enough about you to know how you're going to feel. Or in the past, you've said things that we probably feel indicates that whether it's a joke or something that <clears throat> involves transgender people or not, or something that's LGBT related, that just shows your lack of support, even though it's funny, um, so we'll often distance ourselves from those people, and if it's some, and if you really want to make a difference, approach us and say, and and I mean, just call us out on it and say, hey, I want to be your friend. I want to be your supporter. You know, 
you know, I've noticed you're distancing me. Ask us. And it's, it's the easiest way to, you know, just be straightforward and honest and open. And a lot you, of us you never know who stands in our corner. Yeah, a lot right. of us and the other thing, who stands in our corner. Right. Right. The other thing with it, too, is you don't know what else is going on in our minds. It may be some for some totally other different reason. So, you know, for for my, my my two cents on that piece is ask, right? And then, you know, hopefully the person, you know, will you know, be receptive to, to it as, as well. I mean, Jen, I don't know if you can see – uh, if you've seen that as well from from your aspect on on how you've approached it and how you would suggest an ally approach that situation. Uh, it, it's Tina. What well, do you uh, mean? Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. Well, no, I, I, I just wasn't uh, quite clear with you with that. Okay. All right, uh, Tina. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought maybe Jennifer was was thinking. Um, well, that's all right. I so just, it's just you. <laughs> um, if you just said, "Are you getting the support from me that you need?" That's it's a very simple question. It, it gives me all the latitude to say, "You know what? I, I just got a lot going on at home. Rather not talk about it, or or I could turn it to you and say, "No, I'm not. Here's what I need." Just, that simple. It's not you're not invading my privacy, uh, but you're opening a conversation if I want to go there. Jen? Yeah, I would I would echo that. I think I mentioned it when I was kind of defining an ally. You don't just speak up as an ally; you listen. And so I think if you don't ask and you make assumptions, um, it further pulls you apart from those people that create it creates the divide and, and it may be something really simple and it may be that there is nothing and it may be that that maybe something happened that was misunderstood on either end and I just think that the question you're right it goes a long long way oh great um and I know we're uh, about running out of time um so you know I'm going to ask each of our panelists for uh, uh one one last last comment um uh, What's one one key takeaway that you would like everybody to know as an ally of what they can do to really be a better ally and to help communicate back to their workplaces? Um, Tina. I've focused on the interpersonal aspect. I'd like to cover two things we have not discussed. Yet the Out and Equal produced this year Workplace Gender Identity and Transition Guidelines. Get that. Um, It helps your company make sure you've got the right policies in place. I'd strongly encourage you to download that. When we come out, we are at the most uh, vulnerable point in our life, and it's not the time for us to defend ourselves. So the second thing that you could do to help a trans colleague is to make sure that the benefits are not only in place, but well supported. Because the last thing I want to do when I'm changing gender is to have to go fight for myself to get something covered. I just want to know what is and isn't covered uh, because it's it's incredibly stressful. So that's the second thing you could do to take a lot off their plates is just to clarify and hopefully make make appropriate your, your the health benefits. Hey, Billy. Yeah, what I would like to take away. Sorry, thinking here. I'm... Yes, dealing. Um, the importance of an ally is important. Uh, I had a thought and I lost it. Hold. Okay, uh, well, we can go to Jen well, and then we Jen, can come yeah, back. Let me go to Jen. Yeah, go to Jen. Okay, go ahead. Jen. Yeah, so I know I know we can there's there's so much here and just a couple of to takeaways I think that are a little maybe tangible that people might be looking for um in terms of how to be a better ally or how to be an ally at all is, you know, something as simple as joining an ERG. Um, joining your, your pride or whatever you call it at your at your business and then showing up to events. Don't just be an ERG member on paper. Um, be there. Um, you know, being visible as an ally um, is huge. 
and I think um, you know not only making sure that you share that you're that you're open and inclusive no matter who you're around because you never know who's listening and watching, um, but using you inclusive language. I know we we kind of assume inclusive language really we only hear it in kind of the LGB uh, discussions, but really somebody asked about you know how do you show someone that you're a safe space and that you're open if there's not an obvious you know if you're not wearing a sign or you're not there's not a conversation to be had there you know people really get that you care um, and that you're somebody who wants to respect, you know, who they are when you when you ensure that you use inclusive language everywhere. Um, I think those things are, are huge. And then I think really getting involved. You know, you don't necessarily have to be an activist, but I think if you look, if you're really looking for it, there are going to be areas, there are going to be ways that you can get more involved um, and, and at, a, at a level that you're comfortable with. Um, and I think creating some of the things that we've created, and, and I know they've put on the chat, you know, you could reach out to some of us who, like myself, who have actually been more more involved, may be able to point you in directions of things that already exist that you could that you could support if you're if you're not sure where to begin. Um, and we're happy, definitely happy to do that because uh, I think the more places that we that we start things and get things moving and and created, the, the better. So uh, those would be the things that I would say, you know, as the takeaways that I haven't covered already. Billy. Yes, the importance of the ally is important. The biggest thing uh, any ally needs to remember most is we're just people. We want to be productive members of society. We want to be pretty much like you, like yourselves. We're parents, we're engineers, we're police officers, we're security people, we're people. We're all people, and just making sure that treating us the way you would like to yourself to be treated. Once again, the golden rule follows along here. Do unto, your, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. And by following the simple rules that our parents raised us with, such as, you know, be nice to others, you know, you treat people with respect, it's the best best way to propagate you know a good secure environment in the workplace you're respecting us and we're respecting you we're just respectful people um, you know if you heard if it was non-transgender related and you heard somebody talking and disrespecting somebody else would you speak up yes it's the same for us if somebody's disrespecting us, we're just another person that they're disrespecting. We, yes, we fall into a different demographic, but at the in the end, we're all just people. And that's what the biggest right. thing an ally can probably do for me. All right, uh, thank you all. Um, and I just want to add, you know, my um, request for you. So great, you know, great questions and, and everything. Um, get involved with your ERG. Um, you know, if you've got trans people in your ERG, you know, get involved with them. Help to do an education. Work with them um, to see, you know, what's best for for them to explain. Um, bring in bring in peace flag. Bring in bring in out and equal uh, for others to help educate. Right? Because education is the first thing. Otherwise, you're ignorant. And if you, the more you know, the better that you can interact with us. As Billy said, we're people. You know, we're just like everybody else. We just want to do our job. We want to have, you know, work relationships, outside relationships. We're really good at what we do. There are a lot of really very, very smart transgender people out there who who are, as Billy said, we're, we're scientists, we're engineers, we're security people, we're military, right? What's the difference? We're still, it doesn't matter who we are. We want to just want to be our authentic selves and contribute. So get involved. If you don't think there's any trans people in your group, uh, in your company, you know, work with work with your group to develop, you know, those type of materials. Bring somebody else in to help educate. The the, the other thing, you know, if you think or or um, that someone needs help or you want to help, biggest thing is ask. And sometimes that's the hardest step to do is the step to to ask. So. Uh, I want to thank you all for bearing with us and going a little bit over for all the great questions. Um, 
I know that we're somewhere a little off, on the off topic, but you know I'm going to work with the, the out and equal people, see if we can get a list of, of the rest of those questions, see if we can get you know maybe uh, some of them um, answered and uh, somehow distributed. Um, so if you would like to reach me further, I know I don't have my email up there, but you can search for me on LinkedIn uh, under Angela Orlando um, in Deloitte Consulting. That would be great. I'm glad to touch base with you. I, I did see a couple notes about. Uh, uh, possibilities um, for for reaching out with different different folks um, and and FDMs that, that's fantastic. Um, so please reach out to me. Uh, I can put you in contact with the others if there's any questions. Um, and then we could go ahead and continue continue this conversation and, and build it out and extend it out um, to further. So uh, thanks again to the Out and Equal staff, and it's over to you now, um, uh, Daniel. Wow, what an amazing call. Angela, Billy Lynn, Jennifer, and Tina, thank you all for sharing both your professional and, and personal stories uh, to bring that higher level of awareness about your journey and the critical role of being an ally in the workplace. Uh, so amazing to see many, many questions coming into our chat box. Uh, really a dynamic conversation. Uh, as Angela mentioned, we tried to get through quite a bit of them, uh, but there's still so many that went unanswered. So what we're going to do in the follow-up email to the, this call is try to provide as many answers and resource links as we can for everybody out there so that we can keep the dialogue going. Uh, know that Out and Equal is here as a continued resource uh, for training and toolkits, and feel free to reach out to us on, with that on that. We also have uh, included in the follow-up email the recording to the session, the slides to the session, and we'll also include a link to the transition guidelines that were produced last year by the Out and Equal Transgender Advisory Committee. Once again, thank you all for your time in participating on this panel and for dialing in. Just a brief reminder that the Out and Equal Workplace Summit will be in Orlando, Florida, October 4th through 7th. You can visit us online at outandequal.org forward slash events forward slash summit for more information on that. At the end of this call, there will be a brief survey, and we're interested in your feedback, so please take a few minutes to fill out the evaluation. That helps us to continue to improve this series uh, and make sure that we're providing subject content that is pertinent and important to you. Again, this conversation will be recorded and available in the email link. Once again, thank you all for your time. Our next virtual summit series will be on Tuesday, February 9th at 12 p.m. Pacific, straight talk from teens about having not-so-straight parents, and we hope that you will all join us for that. Thank you all, and have a great day. <laughs>